Thanks everybody for joining us on this session today. Really appreciate your time. We are from Company Application. We're going to be talking about the future of data applications today. We have a packed presentation where we're going to highlight some of the things that we see going wrong when people are building out data applications. A demo to show you the art of the possibility with the, with the look at embedded analytics. And then some key takeaways that you can think about when you're building out your next data application. Quick introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Anton Morrison. I'm the VP of Experience Design at Innovation. Basically, my role is when we're, we're working on these kind of projects is to think about the user at all times. What do they need? What are their problems? What are their struggles? What insight do they need? And really be their advocate when we're building out these things. Gavin, I'll pass it on to you to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Gavin Esty, a technology director here at AppNovation. I try and elevate the conversations we have around technology with our customers and try and find new ways to solve hard problems with innovative thinking. And on that topic, AppNovation. The <laughs> AppNovation name is a combination of applied plus innovation. It's the approach we take to create meaningful results-driven solutions. Uh, we like to deliver for people-inspired digital business solutions. And really, to summarize what that means, it's that we solve real problems for real people. But let's go into what we're going to talk about today. Everyone today is surrounded by data. But starved of insight. So <clears throat> why, why is this? Why do we have everybody surrounded by data but we're starved of interest uh, insight? Well, one of the things that we see a lot is the data teams are siloed from the actual users that need that insight. And they don't take, they don't bring the right people to the table at the same time. At Approvation, we combat this because we follow design thinking principles. And at the heart of design thinking, it's about putting the humans, the people that are going to really need this data and this insight at the center. We also put things through these lenses of viability, feasibility, and desirability. And to be more practical about that, we kind of think about these as strategy, strategy design, technology and engineering, and then design and, and UX design. So let's look at what happens when we don't have all of these players at the table at the same time. So if we take away the strategy and the data strategy, the technology group and the engineer group with the design team can build and, and create lovely looking things or great dashboards or great applications, but there may not be the data strategy to power those dashboards or the, the, the insights that come from them. And more importantly, they may not be answering questions that are important to moving the driving the organization forward. If we remove technology, the strategy team and the design team can think up the wildest uh, solutions possible, but they're more likely not going to be feasible with the infrastructure, the technology stack, or not feasible within a realistic time frame or budget. Now, if we move the UX design, and this is the one that I think we see the most because there's so much technology out there that you can build dashboards and you can build things that people think they answer questions, but we don't focus enough on the people that are using those. There's too much learning. There's too much understanding. We're not meeting the users where they need it. We're not asking the users or co-creating with the users through that, that life cycle of a product. And this is where it's important that we have all of the players together. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this with Looker. So Looker really is the keystone for this journey, the bringing together disparate data sources from across the enterprise and being able to surface insight from that data across devices and channels. I don't think we really have anyone that ever complains that they have a lack of data. It's figuring out what they can do with the data to get value from it. So embedded analytics can really unlock that data and enable those insights to come to you and meet your needs. And it's about moving beyond dashboards to unlock those meaningful insights. We want you to interact with your data anywhere, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on your watch, or even voice. We want you to be able to say, hey, Google, how's my numbers today? 
uh, dash dashboards are only a destination for very few people in your organization. So we want to democratize the distribution of those data insights to the whole organization, not just those select few, so that everyone is equipped to make the best possible decisions every day. And go looking at this diagram and go back to the principles of design thinking, there is human beings, users at the ends of each of these things. But obviously, when you start thinking about all of these interactions and all of these needs for data and the different touch points, things can get pretty complicated. We started to devise a way of visualizing this into what we call a, blue, a, a, a data blueprint diagram. And this is very sim similar to customer experience mapping and service blueprinting, but we add a layer of the data underneath it. So we map out how users are interacting with all your touch points, what, the exact, what those interactions are, the data that comes from those interactions, where that data is stored underneath uh, within the organization, and then how and who can access that data to actually experience it. So having this mapping approach really centralizes everybody around the big picture, and then it can help us prioritize which areas we feel is going to benefit the best for the organization or which is the most uh, approachable to take on first. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit now and start to show you an example of an embedded Looker application that we've been building over the last few months. Um, this is really based around a, 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 um, a mythical company at the moment, but it's based around employee experience. So quick background employee experience. It's becoming a bit of a buzzword over the last 12 months, understandably because of the pandemic and the difference, different ways in which we're working. But there's loads of research out there that shows valuable employee experience can lead to better customer experience. and that everybody is striving towards that best of customer experience. So we felt it was a good thing to focus on. So I'm going to actually die, I'm going to actually go in and show you what this demo is, and it's built upon um, Looker Embedded Analytics. We did do some research around what the, who would be using this type of uh, um, dashboard, and we fell on a global, a global HR manager to understand their needs and wants from the data. So I'm just going to flick over to it now. I'll give it a second to load. So what you can see here is the information that they needed was given to them and with the, the different attributes that they, they were looking for. So it all centers around employee engagement, employee happiness, and it's broken into the different groups within the, the, the organizations. They can see a globalized view of it with an interactive map so that they can navigate different data points there, focus in on a campus, focus in on an office, or look at it globally. For any of the main point, main cards of data, they can go into a, a, a level deeper and start to compare and contrast what are making up these numbers and look for any trends across different departments. Within the, the, one of the biggest things that we found was people were moving to remote working and on campus and a big push for wellness and how initiatives are starting to add to the wellness of the employees so they can drill in to see which wellness uh, initiatives people are participating more in and look for trends and understand uh, what's working, what's not working so that they can make decisions to increase employee wellness. <laughs> We also wanted to go push, push the boundaries a little bit as well and added dark mode and light mode. So we're adding features to the UI that aren't really applicable, that aren't really capable in just normal dashboards or normal data applications. Another part of this we wanted to do is really think beyond the normal data visualization tools. And what you're seeing here is a representation of the whole organization in one, one place. It's one of these data visualizations that I call, you have to learn a little bit about it. So there's a learning curve. But once you get that learning, there's so much information packed in there. So you can get a snapshot of a global company, the wellness and happiness across the company, across the different departments. And we added some interaction, interactive features 
that you can see trends and help you make decisions based on what you're seeing at the, in one place. And the kind of exciting part and the beauty of all this is because we built it with the look at analytics, uh, we can drill in and actually bring in the embedded explore functionality from Looker. So without the user leaving the application, if they had to go in and they had to dig a little bit deeper into some of the data, we can bring that and surface all the, the goodness of Looker uh, right into the web application. So we are just getting this in front of some people to see and use, and that, again, it was showing the art of the possibility with thinking outside of the box and building something custom for the actual users. I'm going to go back to the presentation and talk a little bit more about what this uh, demo took and how, how we built it. Yeah, and it, I think the, the real key here is uh, building with rapid prototyping and how do we get from ideation to MVP and then MVP into production as fast as possible. And we really do that at AppNovation by using small focus teams, using standard web technologies to build and deploy these embedded experiences. We really want to quickly iterate and fold feedback into each iteration figure out what works, what doesn't work, what we could do better. So at the end of the day, we go beyond just something that's just a viable experience. We want to really find something that users can love. And just, just adding to that as well, with this rapid prototyping, we can actually get it in front of actual users and get feedback and get understanding from what's working, what's not working. We can test it with them and make, and co we call it co-creation with the actual users so that we're we know exactly what we're, what we're launching and it will be a product that will be usable. And obviously that's just a web version and you know it's built with quite lightweight technology, but we've already started to think about how we can deliver insight to where the user needs them and what device or what uh, channel they need. You know, when you think about the time a, a person at a company has to look at data and that, we go from data analysts who look all day to a CEO who really just need a one message, a, a, a text message, or be able to see it on their phone. So we really think about this in terms of who needs what insight and looking way beyond just websites and bringing data into people's workflows. And we also want to think about how we can do this from, as a, from a scale point of view as well. Yeah, and, and, and really, this really comes down to delivering insights at scale. And, and really, whether you're using things like uh, BigQuery ML or Jupyter Notebooks, everything needs to start with that good data. And really, we find that data scientists spend the bulk of their time cleaning data instead of answering those important questions. So, so building a pond looker enables them to use that same clean data that we use for uh, visualization and dashboards and then operationalize it with data sets uh, for, and model building and really trying to get those insights to as many people as possible using Looker. And uh, really this comes down to, we want to get the fastest turnaround time and the greatest ability for experimentation so we can get from ideas to answers in less time. And, and really this is that the world is moving faster and we don't want our data to slow us down. And when we look at dashboards, they're useful to a small user base, but really everyone in the organization is needing data. And again, just thinking about that, we can't force people to come and find that data and find that insights. We need to find, meet them where they are in their channels, meet them where they are in their workflows and surface the insight and push it to them and, and where they need it most. <clears throat> 